what's going on at the BRICS summit is kind of being held close to the vest, but I would say there are a couple of things that are sticking out to me. Um, you know, everyone is talking about Project Embridge, and, and certainly that is being discussed, and I'm sure we'll chat about that. And, but there are a couple things that I think, from a marketing standpoint, I guess you could say, it's as if they're trying to market certain information to the West. And to me, what they're trying to market to the West, they're kind of outwardly showing that they have their you-know-what together, that they're they're joined together in unity. And, and I say that we've seen, for example, the discussion of Xi Jinping and, and Modi today meeting on the sideline for their first bilateral meeting since 2022. That's one thing. I think they're trying to show the world that, look, we, we are putting our differences aside as a group, uh, and, and that gives stability. Certainly, that's something encouraging from the standpoint of growing unity uh, and a growing group of countries. Uh, secondly, we talk about BRICS pay. BRICS pay is something that is is more for the, the individual, whereas Embridge is more for the countries trading in, in commodities, as an example, and settling in what amounts to a gold-backed settlement currency. But the BRICS pay would be more like, let's call it a monetary passport, to use Vince Lancey's terminology. I agree with that. It's, it's these uh, people from want to go uh, in, into one of the other BRICS countries, and they're able to use their BRICS pay app, whether it be a credit card or on their phone, that allows them to seamlessly transact in these countries without having to convert first and foremost, and and all of the difficulty in doing so uh, in 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 countries where it might be difficult to exchange your currency very efficiently. So they're they're getting all their ducks in a row all the way down to settling um, retail transactions with public. And I think this is one of the deals where we have to understand that I don't expect anything to come out of this meeting groundbreaking, yet it is a trend that is certainly gaining um, an accelerated, um, coordinated um, group of countries that, that are moving in the direction, I guess you could say, a critical mass, a direction that will be very difficult to challenge, as is, Paul. They already represent a much larger swath of human population, of right. global GDP, of military might, three of the four largest nuclear arsenals, of trade routes, of of, of commodity production, uh, of commodity refining. Uh, it, it's a situation that uh, is certainly should not be underestimated. And it will be interesting when they come out with some sort of a recap, probably on Friday, of what indeed did transpire. Uh, we do know that there's at least 30 countries there that have already expressed interest or delegates from 13 countries that have expressed interest in joining or have fully applied on top of the other countries that are already full members. So uh, it, it's an interesting growing trend that uh, I don't think uh, we've even begun to see what it really amounts to. The, the culture of this country is being whitewashed and you have to almost wonder, you know, is it too stupid to be stupid? There there are schools of thought out there like the Cloward Piven theory, which was taught at Columbia University between a husband and a uh, wife professor, where the whole theory is more or less turning the United States capitalistic society into a socialist society. When you realize that Jared Bernstein went there uh, and just shortly after this, they, they were there, and, and so did Obama, Bill Barr, Madeleine Albright, Eric Holder, um, Anthony Blinken. All of these people in, in government went to Columbia. I'm not saying that they're following the Cloward Piven theory, but if you read it, if you if you read it, it takes 10 minutes to read the theory. They talk about overwhelming the inner cities. They talk about a massive drive onto the welfare program, overloading it, um, uh, which leads to basic universal income. Uh, so many um, uh, overwhelming the system with mass immigration, creating a serfdom of people who will never vote for the Republican Party and um, using the left-leaning media to to lean on uh, you know the sympathy of, of the fact that the uh, welfare system is unjust and unfair. I mean, it's crazy. If you read it, you'll be like, my God, that that is what they're doing. And you know, when people talk about the American spirit, it's still alive, but it was much stronger when we were all united, when we were all American instead of divided. I'm the guy that, you know, when we go to Thanksgiving dinner, my wife looks me in the eye and she says, not a damn word, not a damn word until <laughs> yeah. at least until dessert, because I would like to stay for dinner, you know, because we're defined by who we voted for in the last election. And, and there is such divisiveness. And when you look at 
you know, the, the lawlessness and the lack of safety and social services in the inner city. When you look at the immigration issue, 25 million people in the country illegally. When you look at the integrity of, of things like the Justice Department, the FBI, the judicial system in itself, is it two-tiered? Uh, the electoral system, is it fair? And whether people watching this believe any of those things to be true or not, a good portion of the world does. Or Wealth that has outlived two world wars, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, every pandemic, anything the world's ever thrown at it. And here we are, 5,000 years after it's mentioned, I don't know how many times in the Bible, hundreds of times, and you have the most well-funded and well-informed traders on the planet buying it at a level the world has never seen, that being the central banks. It is not an investment. You didn't have pharaohs and kings and queens and emperors calling their gold dealer to buy gold. They owned it as a form of immutable wealth, immutable wealth that they would have if they needed it for whatever that opportunity or an emergency. People look at it only as an emergency hedge. No, there are opportunities too. And gold has outperformed just about everything over the past 20 years. And I have, I can redeploy it into whatever I want right now. It's not just for emergencies, but it's wealth. It's wealth that I hope I don't need to use. And if so, I can leave to my children knowing that in the year 3000, long after what we call money, the bills in our wallet are hanging from a frame in the Smithsonian as an example of what used to be that gold and silver will still be wealth. And I do believe that. But now suffice it to say, you have eight banks or eight to 10 Western banks that are as stupid as a mud wall in a rainstorm trying to hold back the price of silver in a period of time where it closed through 3250, which is a resistance level, but it up against 35, got through it for a second. If we close above 35, now it's down a bit today. We close above 35, there's nary any resistance between it and 50. The potential for silver to outperform is better than any asset I've ever seen in my life as an increase in demand, green, digital, electrical, electronic, military. But there is a, a, a structural problem within the banking system and higher interest rates uh, on the back end of the bond market will expose much of this very quickly um, as these banks start to run into defaults and defaults from the loans, these bad loans that they have out there, uh, which, you know, with, with their walking dead companies, um, mm -hmm. it's a real deal. And I think what happened with with um, the bank in Lindsay, Oklahoma last week must be realized. And the interesting thing about all of it is that there's no word of it. I did an interview with Jay Martin yesterday and he had no idea about it. And, you know, Jay's a smart dude. Uh, Jay is, is well connected, tuned in, works his butt off, studies hard like you and I do, Dunnigan, and he didn't know about it. Now he's in Canada. The point of it is, is that if a guy that's tuned in and plugged in and reading and researching and preparing for people he's interviewing, you would think that he would know. No, there is a a specific um, plan or 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 whatever you want to call it to not let this information out, but just enough to say we told you so. I would think that this is just the very beginning. You could say it's a slow fuse that was lit in Lindsay, Oklahoma, that we will see much more of as as days and weeks go by. And it's very ominous and eerie that it 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 this BTFP ends. On the six, you want to talk about rug pull? They could pull the rug right out from underneath it, you know. And and you look at the the betting odds. The betting odds show that Trump is a, about a, a two to one um, favorite. And I think the betting odds are better than the polls. Vegas knows more than the polls do. And you know, you want to talk about letting all of this blow up on his watch? You want to get conspiratorial? Sure, I, I could see all of that stuff happening. I think it's going to only get crazier after the election and the banks are a perfect tipping point to to ignite that fuse what is the one or or the one asset class that, that all of these entities are buying it's commodities precious metals base metals you, you name it um you know the the chinese bought the london metals exchange that's that's the base metals you know the the whole premise of the belt road is to to bring in countries that are underdeveloped and and develop and pull out their minerals and that's their right. metals and their commodities, bring all of this to the market. All, all, all of what I see is a situation where the commodities that all these countries are accumulating are worth more than the, the, the currency used to pay for it. Like for example, in, right. in India, where they've been buying more silver than anyone in the world. And they've bought, I don't know, eight, 900 million ounces in the last three years. Silver's at all time highs against the Indian rupee. And we're still 40% away in our overvalued 
uh, unjustified value of our dollar is creating a, 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 a market where it's 40% from its all-time high. It's at all-time highs in rupee, uh, in, in South African rand, almost at all-time highs in the Canadian dollar and, and the euro. So... But that not just means yet, it's a but, good buy. Isn't that just mean it's a good buy right now? Because yeah, it's way and that's undervalued. And usually, gold and silver are not investment material. They're at their insurance and and just a store of wealth. But right now, they're actually in a good investment. Yeah, well, silver especially, and yes, and gold reached all time highs in all these other currencies before it broke out in dollars. It's a, following a similar pattern. Um, and now you have. Russia would just came out and said, we're going to add it to our state uh, savings or state stockpile. No one's ever said that before. S governments don't do this. Uh, they, they, they do with gold, but now they're buying silver continuously. Uh, China has gone from a net exporter to a net importer. And you start by creating one bank bail in just a little itty bitty. No one mm -hmm. really knows, but shh, don't tell. Yeah. And then what happens if it, if it starts to cascade and brings down the system, then yeah. What will people's willingness be to take a, a digital currency if you, it's the promise of being made whole? I don't know. Right. I'm just saying that things are so crazy now. It's like you have to start thinking this way. Or or if you don't think unconventionally in unconventional times, you get rolled by the by the changes instead of rolling with them when you at least see what's coming. Yeah. You can maybe even get out of the way of it. That's the way I look at it. I'd rather have options. Um and maximize what you can do within the bounds of legality and do what the biggest money in the world is doing. Um, the the right. central banks, they're, they're showing you with their actions that this is where smart money is going.